Robin, you drew the short end of the stick, my man. We got to talk some Nebraska football, and it's uh, it's anything but easy right now for the Cornhuskers. And by the way, the other thing I would tell you, good to talk to you again, man. I um, I feel really, really bad uh, for for Joseph. I mean, what what a way to start a career. Mickey Joseph deserves better, Robin. Yeah, that he got thrown right into the fire, and uh, clearly that was a little bit more than anyone let alone uh, himself could, could have chewed. So that, uh, that was a tough spot. Um, you know, obviously a week ago today, uh, the news broke uh, that Scott Frost had been let go and they promoted Mickey Joseph to interim. And um, he had a lot of issues to try to address in a short amount of time, jumping right into game week. And clearly um, they did not have nearly enough time to get done what they needed to, to even be remotely competitive in that game against Oklahoma. That was about as close to JV versus varsity as you're going to find uh, at the power five level. Uh, and so, you know, they're, they're in a real tough spot. And um, to be fair, the first five or so minutes of that game, they looked fantastic. The energy was unbelievable. Mickey was pumping up the guys in pregame. He had the crowd eating out of his hand. They were showing him on the big screen, hyping up the, the players during warmups, and everybody was just going crazy. And they get a three and out stop right out of the gates, and then march 70 some yards down on a just, perfection touchdown drive and all of a sudden people are looking around like is this really happening then reality set in where nebraska's laundry list of defensive flaws uh became grossly apparent uh the the offense slowed down once they got off the script and again the like i said the reality of the situation um set in and and got rid of all that that emotional high they were running off going into the game so uh yeah, it was a, a difficult spot this week. And I guess the good news is they have a bye. So they bye have two, week. two straight weeks to try to figure some things out. They're going to continue to reevaluate the roster. Um, there's a chance there might be some further coaching staff shakeups, whether it be reassignments or, or beyond that, um, that they're going to really look at here. I just don't know what more they can really do. You know, they've already played a lot of guys and really no one's, no one's playing that well. Um, and so I just don't know from a personnel standpoint, different things they can try as far as new starters or whatnot schematically, you know, you're, you're already four games into the season. You know, is, are you going to do a complete overhaul of, of what you've been working all the way up to this point? So I've, their hands are kind of tied a little bit. And to your point, Mickey Joseph's just, is in a, in a real tough spot. And I know he really wants this job. Uh, he said it publicly, uh, but he's he's got a very steep uphill battle ahead of him this year. Yeah, Robin, I read on Husker Online, by the way, you guys, great work. Obviously, I've worked with Sean and you and you guys. I'll be doing a show, in fact, with Husker Online on Monday night. Uh, and we'll have to reiterate some of these uh, points, unfortunately, uh, as you're noting. But I wonder, let's look big picture here now that we know in essence, this is a lost season. It's Mickey Joseph's effort to try out for the position. I Obviously, it's not off to a great start. Pretty difficult set of circumstances, to say the least. But I know you noted, and I watched the game yesterday, um, that it got off to such a great start. And obviously, that place is as good as any in college football when things are going well. Nebraska hasn't really been blown out. This is a situation oh. where, for by and large, all of these losses that led – Obviously, to Scott Frost's firing were, were real close losses. He couldn't win any of them, seemingly, and uh, inevitably he got fired. This is the first we've seen of a team get absolutely even, – even against Oklahoma a year ago, Robin, I know you well know, in Norman, that's a close football game. That comes down to the fourth quarter. Did you see this coming yesterday? Did you note that this is a little bit different, that a lot of these guys in that locker room now have had to reassess how happy they are to be there? The coach that recruited them has been fired – where are their heads at now as you have a chance to kind of talk to these players? There is still a lot of football to be played. Yeah. I mean, as you would imagine, they're, they're in a rough spot as well. Um, you know, the, just the tone of the players that talked after the game, you know, they tried to say all the right things, but I think they're starting to kind of understand the reality of their situation as well. Uh, and so that's going to be the real, real battle here. And, and the real challenge for Mickey and this coaching staff is just keeping what happened Saturday from happening and again, at least keeping the team competitive and, and playing with fight and, and all that stuff that um, will at least keep this from turning into a, a total disaster beyond what it already is. And no, I did not see, I mean, I won't say like I totally ruled it out that they could get blown out, but the history suggested that this would be a much more competitive game. I mean, obviously go back to last year, yeah, they're three and nine, but as we all know, they're the best three and nine team of all time. Where they, uh, you know, had just one 
one score loss after another and found ways to turn wins into losses uh, at the very end. And so that's kind of how I thought this one was going to go. A lot similar to the game in Norman um, where you know, I thought Nebraska was going to be able to ride that, uh, that emotion uh, and the, the kind of resurgence of confidence they got with Mickey uh, a little bit longer than they did. Um, but clearly, you know, like I said, they've, they've got a lot of problems on their hands right now that, um, you know, emotion can only take them so far. And, you know, especially on the defensive side of the ball, they're just, uh, there's a big mess on their hands right now. And so that, uh, what was surprising wasn't the fact that it was a lopsided score, but the fact that it was just completely non-competitive after the first five minutes or so, you know, I thought that they were going to play with a little bit more, um, a little bit more just just fight. I mean, being able to, to tackle better and fight to the football the way that they did to start that game. Um, that was short-lived, and uh, that loss was the first time Nebraska has ever just been completely blown out, uh, I think going back to like the last 13 losses. I mean, they've been competitive. They've lost a lot, but at least they've been competitive. And so that's that's probably the biggest concern right now is not only did they lose – but the manner at home in which they lost when, you know, they had the, the 71 championship team on the sidelines, Tom Osborne's up there you know, doing video promos and uh, to have that kind of effort. The question about how they respond to that now becomes uh, greater than ever. Yeah. Final thing. And we don't want to beat a dead horse. Obviously the situation is dire right now. Trev Alberts with the coaching search, it'll go on through the course of the year. I just mentioned at the top tough deal for Mickey Joseph to have that be his first game, but you touched on something that I think is even more alarming to most college football fans. And if you're a college football fan, you know that Nebraska has the black shirts. They can rely on good defense most years, or certainly they take pride in it. You know, going back to the game in Ireland, and then you bring it back up, all the games, whether it's Northwestern, North Dakota, GSU, doesn't really matter. Everybody's attacking the middle of this defense over and over again. You know, that stuck out to me. I know you wrote about it. I know I've seen it before, but I'm watching yesterday, and I think – Probably about eight minutes into the game, I began to go, oh, this this is a problem. Oklahoma's figured out that they can attack the middle, both running the ball and throwing the ball uh, down the seam. So what can be done, if anything, from a personnel standpoint, or is this sort of just a lost year? Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's the biggest surprise, in my opinion, is that the defense has been so bad. You go back to last year, the defense played well enough for them to win every game. It was special teams or turnovers or whatever it was that – uh, ultimately did them in in the end but uh, now they don't stand a chance right now because of the way the defense is playing just the the tackling first and foremost has been atrocious uh, you know we just put up our uh, pro football focus grade outs and just kind of run down um, you know, how each player graded out and this, the, every week the tackling grades uh, have been as dismal as we've seen in a long time and the biggest culprits are supposed to be their best players the inside linebackers they were supposed to be the 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 constants that we knew what we were going to get out of them between Nick Henrich and Luke Reimer. Now Henrich has missed the last couple of games with a, a hand injury, but uh, you know, wh whoever's on the field, whether it's those two starters or their backups, everyone is struggling um, to stop the run and to tackle in space. And then beyond that, beyond them is the safety play. Uh, you know, guys like miles farmer um, and uh, Marcus, Mar 